Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to look at the VHL code, which I have to. Yeah, there goes my neighbor again. <laughs> so I have to prepare for uh, because it's three years old code and everything. So I will just uh, here show you the overlook. So this is the ship I'm implementing. It's from the datasheet block diagram. And then you have all the modules I have to implement. I have made them, but I have to make them work though. So, so there you go. Timer A, timer B. We will implement those. And then <laughs> I got a bit distracted by this uh, neighbor here. So this is all the port pins that we have that goes out to the pads. We have timer A which we know that is working. Here you can see committed out timer B, port A, port B, and so on. And then we have interrupt. I have taken it in, but I don't think it compiles yet. Um, then we have component time of day, which is are going to look at later. Maybe not in this video though. So, so that's all the components and it's just a carbon copy of all the uh, modules so of the port pins and here you can see all the signals so we use the signals to connect the modules together so so these are the instantiations as you can see I've also uh, only have one for timer A there the others are commented out and uh, yeah so we'll have to bring them in again see what we can do with them yes yeah, so let's bring in timer B now I have already fixed this but in some of the components I don't have a separate data in and data out single so what I used to do, like here before, I used to have uh, all the three state logic in each module so they can control when data is put on the bus by themselves. But internally in uh, FPGA, that's very efficient because it will be just converted to digital logic anyway. So data is going out when we have read write and a ship select, otherwise it will be high set. And uh, here you can see the data path. So we will have lines going up to the data buffer. And up out there in the data buffer, we will have the tree state though. So, but only there. And here is the multiplexer. So whatever the address is, we will then um, select what we will put out on data out. And then data out will then eventually get out on the data bus. So here we have a signal that needs to be added uh, for timer B. So we can connect that together with the data out. Yep. All right, so I used to have the rigs to select decoding logic on the outside of the modules. And then I had uh, strobes going in, like down there, register strobes. Uh, but that's not that was a bit uh, fussy so I'll just bring a register select in and then remove all the strobes and I'm screaming at the screen here because uh, screen because I <laughs> this is a screen recording and I'm recording later I'm not supposed to edit these components like this I'm supposed to edit well that's a good idea anyway to do um, entities the one on the right side port there the port and then bring that port in so <laughs> because it's supposed to be equal so a, a carbon copy if you like so uh, here you can see timer a is connected to timer b and uh, the way this works it is that uh, you can make timer b count every time timer a underflows that means that it counts down to zero and then starts over so you can cascade the timers in that way so the way we're going to do that we are going to have a signal 
connecting them together. So let's get down to the instantiation of timer A. And here you can see the signal and the flow dash I underscore I. And uh, we have to bring in the instantiation of timer B also. We also need register select. So basically this is going to look a lot like the um, the port. So well it's the port map anyway, so it has to be the same, right? So what you have on the left side is the port names and the right side is uh, the signals. Okay, I'll put timer A on the left side and timer B on the right side. And here I'm just comparing them because I know timer A is something that works well now. So I'm try just trying to replicate. What I'm doing now is that I'm moving those uh, debugging uh, signals that goes into the seven segment display. So we can uh, have them out on the port and then uh, route it out to the top structure means out on the ports of the ship. So let's see if there's something else we can do. Yeah, we will need some signals. So the signals disconnect the input of that uh, seven segment display driver thing. I made it at the university as an assignment. So, but I haven't showed it. We don't need last RS actually. So. And this is another multiplexer for data out, but it's just for this uh, uh, timer though, or this module. So here comes the instantiation of the seven segment control. So, and there you can see I've connected timer A to the D0, D1, D2, D3. So we need to change that to timer B or whatever we want to look at. If we want to look at an internal latch, we can then change those. So Here we have uh, something called timer toggle. I'm going to fix something in timer B that I've fixed in timer A. And it's a common mistake in uh, FPGA programming. It's having logics on your um, clock inputs. So the timer A and B, they can read a external signal for counting. So, but the flip-flops, they don't like asynchronous signals. So we sync it up to the clock. Then I sync it again to itself. Well, I don't sync it, I just make a copy. And then I make another signal out of those two again to get a nice clean enable signal for my timer. So that's the way I've done here. You can see count sync equals one and then all count is zero. We get a tick equals one. So on timer B though, we have a uh, multiplexer that uh, enables all these uh, different clocks. And you can see rising edge there, timer clock. And uh, therefore I have logic on the clock input, which isn't good. So again, back to the uh, function, the process for uh, synchronization, you can see we have uh, count sync equals one and all count equals zero, we create zero, and then we create tick equals one if that situation is met. Let's look at those modes this timer can run at and we also have to look at uh, loading yeah so let's disable that uh, multiplexer and then uh, first we'll just basically make the same thing we're going to make that enable signal so just speed it up for you <laughs> there we go so when the old count is count sync uh, it will be one cycle later, so therefore we get, get that sort of glitch, so we get a uh, one-shot pause. So let's bring in the loading of the timer. So we're going to load the latches, 
Uh, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing here because here I'm loading. I think I might have changed it later. Not sure. Should just keep that in mind. And when it's written like this, it's uh, like the reset actually. It's kind of like a asynchronous thing. So anyway, we need to fix that timer clock on the right side there, rising edge timer clock. Yeah, so let's bring in those signals from uh, from that uh, multiplexer on top there on timer B and make them into enable signals rather than a clock input where there says timer clock and uh, we only want system clock on that uh, rising edge thing there. So these two timers they have uh, modes and uh, timer A has two modes and timer B has four modes so they can count in different ways system clocks and count input and uh, underflows and underflows only when there's a count high here i just have to look up uh, case statements for processes because i didn't know the i remember the syntax so it makes sense to use a case statement here because uh, we have four modes though so i'm just bringing in all the modes from the multiplexer bow that I've uh, greened out so here in this mode we're going to count count input so we, and we made tick equals one above and then we're going to decrement the counter so in this mode we're going to count underflows so I have synchronized those also, also into enable signals like an edge detect thing and uh, finally, we are only going to count underflows if count sync is high or count is high. But since we're in a uh, synchronized system, we need to use the sync signal, synced count signal. Going a bit fast here, but I hope that's okay. So because it's dead slow anyway <laughs> to program this. So and then usually I end the. Uh, the thing with uh, when others equals zero is because you want to tell that this is the last statement. If there's anything else, then uh, this is the outcome. So I probably will get a compiler warning here. I think I did also had to fix that. Put in a when others equals zero or so, or when others or something like that. Yep, we need some signals also. There you go. And uh, yep. Okay, I realized this was going a bit fast, and this is just that double speed. So now we're going to make that uh, underflow tick signal. And I'm going to do it in the exact way as I did for tick, or the count sync tick, where you find the edge, positive going edge, of count. So we don't really need to sync this signal up. So we're going to use these ICs, but we need old signals also. So to remember what the old signal was one cycle ago. So here I'm just putting up the default value, which is zero in this process. And if the situation is met, or the condition is met, where the timer and the flow equals one, and it was zero, then we're going to put it high. Otherwise it will be the default value of zero. So therefore you get one cycle long pulse. So yeah, so don't remember exactly if this works. <laughs> we'll see later in the video if I need to change something there. Right, so I made a mistake down here. It was supposed to be timer under flow tick, not timer under flow. Because it's only going to one one cycle long tick also. Or else you can get multiple decrementations of the timer B anyway. <laughs> So in this ending part of the video, this part of the video anyway, we are going to look at uh, warnings, but it's very boring, so I will just speed it up here. So fix one thing, like semicolons and never semicolons at the end of the port there is all boring. And then we have commas, and oh my gosh. So let's try and fix as many as we can before we do another 
uh, what should I say? Um, yeah, so and there's stuff I forgot to do also there. So just fixing as much as I can before I do another uh, compilation. But we'll just say this will be the end of part one. And uh, hope you enjoy this video. And I have like five more of these, so I think. I will split them out. Up. I hope that's okay. Because it's a lot of work and uh, yeah, get tired. <laughs> bye bye.